the way she walks, feet pacing through the halls like a heartbeat, unshifting, but with a sound that makes you think it has something to tell. Always looking away like she's got something to hide, smelling of ivory soap and cocoa Chanel, she has always been my favorite thing to notice. But since when did her eyes start to avert mine? Since when did we become two strangers sitting in the emptiness of our Cherrywood dining room table? I know it's been difficult, but since when did your nightmares become the foundation to your nostalgia? Why have you always loved keeping a dress you'll never even wear? Since when did the reflections of your temptation become so apparent? Never leaving any room for even the most oblivious of persons to endure confusion. The first face to validate my beating heart is now unrecognizable. Whenever I speak to you, it is as though I am speaking into the depths of a well and I am lucky if I can hear my own echo. Whoever wrote this story, may it be the works of God or the wry, twisted sense of humor of the universe will never even think of giving you the role as the main character. God forbid you shall ever be named the protagonist. No, this author has condemned you to be the control in an experiment manipulating your every thought, to be such a lifeless comparison only to show the worthlessness our society has succumbed to. You have yielded to such manifestation, placed into routine like the cattle ready to be slaughtered, naive to the truth, your head has grown so thick, so arrogant, I sometimes wonder if your head is filled with slime. For your opinionated ways have led to the grant of your own subjugation, placed into perfect packaging at your local supermarket. Wasting away hours for a screen to show you a world you already have, like a U-term with no end, reacting, reaching an actual destination. Unable to understand that this is your own crucifixion, nailing your own hands to the walls that life has specifically built for you. Whenever we reach ourselves in a matter of confrontation, you always tell me that the grass always looks greener on the other side. My thought is that you purposely fertilized it with your own bullshit, just so you wouldn't even have to try. I'm not one to judge, but why do you tell me that you're too tired to put up a fight when each time I try to pull you out of your own casket, I am greeted by your fists, told to get lost in the smoke with the rest of your reality. What was once a flare has now become a disconnected wire. You have done everything to make our emotional connection just the figment of a child's wild imagination. Since when have the reasons for your very existence melted away like the candle you'd leave in my room during the late hours of the night, just so I wouldn't be afraid of the dark? The moments we spent together were symphonies, I stored in a music box, and am now forced to play them over as the box slowly rusts away to debris. Our bondage that was once a sturdy, indestructible brick wall of cement and endless labor has now become an old, torn down wall filled with graffiti and the once beautiful memory of what it used to be. And after this terrible loss, I ask you, why am I the only one who has shown up to mourn at its obituary? And since when did the bee that transports the pollen become more important than the stigma that nurtures it?